Hey friends, it is Wednesday and that means it's Ask a Flower Farmer. It's your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler here and um, glad to be here with you guys today. So if you've never joined us before, the way that this works is if you, I will do my best to answer your questions. And if you would like to submit a question, just down at the bottom of your screen is a little bubble with a question mark. And that's where you put your questions. That way I don't have to scroll through all the names and perhaps miss your question. So this week's topic um, for all of my lives pretty much is seed starting troubleshooting because we are getting lots and lots of questions and um, I know that everybody is kind of getting busy doing seed starting as we are. And so, you know, that would be if you've got, if you're struggling with something, there is no dumb question, y'all. Um, you just got to ask it, right? So I'm going to just kind of address three of the hot topic items this week. First one is, um, why do I need a heat mat? So this is what a seedling heat mat looks like, friends. This is the small one. We have a big one and a small one. And, you know, most seeds, not every seed, but most seeds need about 75 to 85 degrees to germinate. And right about now, people are thinking, well, shoot, my house is like 72 degrees. I should be able to, you know, just not do it without. Well, that is air temperature, friends. That is not the temperature of that mass of soil. If you put your finger up against the side of one of those soil blocks or any, a tray or whatever on the soil, it's ice cold. That's because that mass is typically 15 to 20 degrees cooler than the air temperature, which will explain why so many people struggle. Um, that one little step by heating up the soil on a seedling heat mat that um, has a built-in thermostat. That's the little thick thing that is right here on the end. That heats up the heat mat 15 to 20 degrees warmer than the air temperature. Is it all like light bulb moment for anybody right now? So that is really a big, big issue that we see people, I mean, the, the number of seeds that just sit there and rot in cold soil um, is really sad when you think about it. But I will tell you, it happens day in and day out. And so I'm showing you these because Rhonda pointed this out and it was such a great thing. You know, these are our trays that we now have back in stock that we absolutely adore for soil blocking. But these are actually what are called windowsill trays. That is the last place that you want to put your seeds when you're trying to germinate, friends. That's the other part of not using a heat mat. Where do people think they can put their heat, their seedlings, um, to get them to germinate without a heat mat? They put them on the windowsill. That is the coldest spot in your house besides taking them out and setting them on the front porch, right? Um, so you do not want to put them there, um, which also leads us into the next problem, which is grow lights. Um, for plants to stay, you know, one of the things that we hear, sorry, y'all gotta let Tucker out. He's just standing here. He's like five feet away from me and he's whining like a little sissy boy. Um, so, the other part of the problem is grow lights. And so I hear all the time people saying, oh my gosh, your seedlings are so beautiful and they're bushy and short and stocky and just look so amazing. Well, why is that? Because I grow with grow lights. Seedlings to stay short and stocky and to grow the quickest need 16 hours of light a day. Well, we don't even have 16 hours of light a day, friends. So... The grow light is another important part, and this all helps me to circle around to why I fell in love with soil blocking in the very beginning, because we grow in that little block, which is only three quarters of an inch, and it is it makes the most out of the small amount of real estate you have on heat mats and grow lights, because friends, none of us have enough space ever. Even when you get a lot of space, you're growing a lot more than you really, really can. So it is a really a constant struggle. So the recipe for success for us has been soil blocking, seedling heat mat, have grow lights, 
and then follow the steps of great seed starting. Um, and so that is my tip of the day. And the last thing, and then I'm going to start talking, looking at your questions, is the other problem people are having already is fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are a reality whenever you have soil indoors. Whether you have, um, you're talking about seed starting, which really makes it really, really easy for them to get set up. Tucker's pacing around and bumping things, sorry. Um, but when you start seed starting and have moist soil inside, fungus gnats are a big problem. Gnat troll is the larva side that I put into my watering can every single Wednesday from the day I start seed starting. And then I use the yellow sticky traps to monitor and to also catch adults. Friends, so much of this is a prevention, right? That's the, that's the real battle we have to fight to win the war is to just start as you begin seed starting. All right, so I see we have a whole bunch of questions down here. How long will you continue starting seeds for early spring planting? Um, so that's a really good question, um, but it's the question is really about when is the latest that I should be planting very early spring, meaning cool season hardy annuals, right? So typically for us, early March is the um, end of Tucker's being He's, he's stealing invoices, so sorry, y'all. Um, so for us, the six to eight weeks is mid-February to the 1st of March. So we try not to really be planting much after that 1st of March at all if we can help it. So then you backtrack from that. How long does it take me to get seedlings ready for that late date? So I know that I've already started all of our straw flowers. Bobo will be starting on Thursday a ton of stock. Um, and a couple of other things this week, um, but it all boils down. If you need four weeks to get a good size transplant, then that means that's when I'll start. We will finish all of our very early spring seed starting probably in the next 10 to 14 days. So remember, if you have a question, post it down in the bubble with the question mark. Can you reuse blocking mix when a seed doesn't germinate? So Carla asked that, and that's a really good question. You really can. Um, once it's dried out and if you're not using it, you can crumble it up and just incorporate it back into your blocking mix. Um, so yes, that is definitely doable. And remember, if you're one of our students, we just love when you all comment with the sunflower emoji. That just identifies you to me and to everybody else that you're one of our students. Room for Flowers asks, I'm planting my summer rose. How long will cool flowers last through summer? That is definitely a great question, but it is also a very unique question to wherever you are. Um, so for folks that are in the northern part of the country, like New England, Montana, Nebraska up there, their cool flowers sometimes can even go all summer. Folks like me that live, I'm in the mid-Atlantic where summer starts and we get heat and humidity, um, they start petering out. However, I will tell you that June is our high season um, for cool flowers. That's when they're really coming into their own. And then as we're heading into July, it's not even really that they stop. But a couple of things happen, and this is just a really great, would be a great topic to talk in depth about. People crave seasonality. Um, you know, when, they love the spring flowers when spring comes. And, you know, June is still kind of spring, kind of spring, summer, right? Well, once the summer flowers start coming in, meaning the coxcomb and sunflowers and zinnias and all that stuff, our customers start to yearn for those kinds of flowers, you know, and they aren't quite so hot to trot for all those spring flowers anymore. Um, so we don't go to any special efforts to extend cool flowers. Cool flowers fills April, May, and June for us. And then as they start petering out, we just extinguish them and move on to the next ones. So it totally depends on where you are, how great, what your, your growing skill is as to how long cool flowers will actually bloom into summer for you. 
Kelsey, I know it's early, but can you explain how you get early blooms of sunflowers with hoops and row cover? Um, well, Kelsey, it's basically by first off, you know, we start all of our sunflowers indoors, plant them out when they're two to three weeks old. We start them in 128 plug trays. Um, and our goal is to have the first planting about three to four weeks before our last frost. So you have to count back and do the math. And then when we plant them, we hoop and row cover them. And we did it last year with excellent results. Um, and we had sunflowers for Mother's Day. What seeds need the burlap mesh to germinate? So she is speaking of the wide weave burlap that we just lay gently on the surface of the soil blocks, which aids in retaining moisture, but still allows great air circulation. Um, we have never been dome users. You know, I learned seed starting from Elliot Coleman, and he felt like the domes really was, was really easy to um, have experienced disease and fungus if you don't monitor them super closely. And what we found as busy growers is we don't monitor, monitor anything really closely other than the lunch hour time, right, at 12 noon. So I never used the domes because he didn't. But many of the seeds that we sow are surface sown, meaning they're firmly seeded on the surface, and those dry out quicker, and those definitely benefit from using the burlap. I would use the burlap on all soil blocks, um, but it definitely aids um, for those surface sowers. Cultivating the heart. Do you have a recommendation on what type of asters to grow? I'm looking specifically for the taller purple variety if you have any advice. I have no advice for you because we cannot grow asters here. Um, we get that disease called asters yellow, which is spread by insects, the leafhopper, of which we don't have a big problem with leafhoppers, but we have enough of them that I've just skipped asters and we may try again someday, but so I have no experience growing them, sorry. What is your opinion of using Bio 360 without drip tape? Can you water at each plant effectively? I can speak to that because how many times, Bobo, have we run out of irrigation tape while we were making beds? <laughs> and we just said, we're going for it, right? So the way that we water plants, whether they're they've got irrigation or not because we always hand water new newly planted transplants they're always hand watered um, but when you you know you make holes to plant plants in in your um, film and you basically flood the top of the bed it's not so much that you're putting your wand on each and every hole you kind of figure out how the the plat the the platform um, or the surface of your bed is, and you can see where you need to water to make a little waterfall into each hole. And yes, it's very easy to do. We've done it, we've done it a number of times, um, and it can definitely work. All right, well, there is my friend Tannis. Hi, old friend, sorry, not a seed starter question, that's all right. But I have had six trays of straw flowers that I've never got into the ground now, it's in the 20s at night, what would you do? I'd plant those boogers. Um, you know, they're a cool flower, as I know that you know, Tannis. Um, and I would just put them, you know, acclimate them a little bit to 20 degrees. Um, and, you know, or if they've been in the tray for a long time, what's gonna be waiting two more weeks? I mean, wait till your six to eight week window. That's when we plant them out. Um, we can't fall plant them because they're not winter hardy here. And I forget if you're zone six, five, six, seven, maybe, um, or even eight, right? Um, so I'd plant them with hoops and covers, or I'd just sit on them a little bit longer until you think it is safe again. Little Flower Farm. I'm wanting to try pelleted champion campanula in 5b do you have tricks and suggestions for success i'm not sure if you're asking about seed starting um suggestions and i'll tell you what my seed starting solution was i buy plugs 
<laughs> of Champion. Um, we just had spotty germination. I never perfected it. And that is one of the pricier seeds, or at least it used to be. Um, and so we buy plugs. Um, and that is a super winter hardy. Um, we went, we fall plant that and it is looking awesome this year. Um, so I'm afraid I cannot give you any tips on starting that from seed. Yes, seed starting. Um, so the seed starting, I cannot, I do not, I mean, you need to look at the culture sheet and see what the germination requirements are. Um, that would be the secret. I mean, is it a cooler air temp? You know, that's what pulls out those few seeds that we've just always bought plugs of, delphiniums, you know, campanula. I also did it for trichelium. They just need different air temperatures than what the other stuff that I'm growing needs. Um, and we just don't, can't provide that. So it's just easier to buy plugs in. Cultivating the heart in the edges of your beds. How do you keep the grass weeds from growing through this or from, or from creeping in? Any tips on keeping that area nice and tidy? So I'm not sure if you're talking about, I mean, we, our summer beds are made with Bio 360 by our tractor. And then we just let whatever grows in the pathways grow and we mow it. There is definitely in that window of when the transplants are small and there's not a big canopy of vegetation that's kind of shading the bottom of the bed, which is below. Um, about one time during the season, um, Bobo and Christine will go along and pull the weeds that are the grass that has grown up kind of on to the bed. They'll just pull it back and right before I mow. And that allows me to mow it. And it's, you know, it doesn't solve it all, but it's a good, um, it's a good try at it. But then by that time, all of a sudden the plants get mature and you don't even think about or see that anymore. Um, but we mow the pathways is what we do. And we pull it off the beds. Wouldn't you say once Bobo, maybe a season? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that way, you know, then the plants kind of shade it out and either you don't see it or you don't care. So <laughs> either one of those works. So that's what we do. Do you know the top five flowers and top five fillers you like and the florists like to buy is just curious? Um, no, not really. I could name off the top flowers that um, we sell. Coxcomb, sunflowers, zinnias, lisianthus, celosia plumes. Um, those come to mind. Um, and, you know, I think people are sometimes so very, very um, surprised by that. The simplicity but that's what I sold for 24 years, 23 years. Um, I know that people are this time of the year like, oh, I've just got to add something really new and great. Your customers are just looking for a consistent supply of good quality, long lasting cuts. And we just sold the same things over and over again. My goal was just to have consistency as much as possible. And what what is one man's filler is another person's flower. You know, so many people look at filler so differently. We use tons of hydrangeas for filler. We use solidago before it blooms for filler. We, of course, grow mountain mint, which everybody should grow as filler. Um, those are all things. I mean, yarrow, so many of the cool flowers are great fillers. Bells of Ireland. Um, all of those are just, you would never, ever have enough of them. So why grow a 100 different things if you can't grow enough of these 20 things for all your customers to get it. Took me several years for that light bulb to go on, y'all. Uh, I understand the need and the intoxication of seeing all this gorgeousness on social media, but I'm not about that. I'm about the bottom line, being the most efficient with the least amount of my time and the least amount of our labor for the best bottom line to come out on the end. I'd rather spend my money on other stuff. So anyway, that's what I think about that. Hi, do you use those cookie racks for some or all seed starting? That's a great question. They're talking about the cookie cooling racks, cookie cooling racks that you use when you take a cookie out of the oven. Only when we're starting cool season hardy annuals, 
which still need it warm, but they don't need it quite as warm. They need the consistent heat of a seedling heat mat, but not quite as hot. So that cookie cooling rat raising your trays about an inch off of the heat mats creates just enough airspace that, um, that it does the perfect job for you. Hi, Lisa. I planted my tulip bulbs in mid-December. I'm in California 9B. Well, I don't do tulips, but I can almost pretty much assure you I don't think you'll see any tulip blooms unless you planted programmed bulbs. You don't get enough cold. Um, and, you know, I cannot say enough that Dave Dowling's course, Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and More, I think is accable whether if you're an avid gardener, you would benefit from the knowledge in his class. That is, I mean, he will zip you up on tulips, lilies, all of those bulbs, and how not to waste so much money um, on things that are just so risky in wherever you are and what conditions you have. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't grow tulips. Zone 5B, Maine. If soil not properly prepared in fall, I know where this is going. Can you plant cool flower seedlings in containers? Direct sow some of the cool flower seeds. So, Teddy Bear, um, yeah, so that's the learning lesson of particularly the people that live up in the northeast or the northern part of the country is even though you don't think you can plant cool flowers in the fall, which there might be a few, you could definitely plant Rebeccas. Um, you don't even think about preparing for very early spring because you can't typically do that this time of the year. Cool flowers will function in large containers, not little pots, but in either bulb crates or in large containers, but that does hold them back some. So you may not get the stem length or the abundance with that. And you can definitely direct sow, but the problem with direct sowing in very early spring is that those seeds are just going to sit there until you get warm enough conditions for them to actually sprout, right? And by then, you've kind of missed okay. that window. But I know a lot of people, particularly people up where you are, that plant larkspur and all of those direct seeded things um, in very early spring and have good luck because your summers don't get hot and humid, um, which is what they fall victim to down here. So I definitely say experiment and, you know, let us know how that goes. Generally speaking, when growing seedlings in soil blocks after 50% of seeds germinate, do soil blocks stay under lights about three weeks and then in cold frame for a week? Um, so that's a good question. So you're asking about what the process is. So once they get off the heat mat, I would say that's a good guess, about three weeks under the grow lights to get them up. See, what's going to happen is when you're moving cool flowers, in very early spring outside to plant them, they're not going to do a lot of vegetative growth on the top because it's just too cold, but their roots will get busy. That's what we want. So I like to have a fairly, you know, three to five inch transplant to go out to the garden and because they're not going to, you know, you want them to be have enough substantiation to hold up, right? Um, and so, yeah, and I don't really, if I'm going to use hoops and row covers out in the garden, I don't even do a week of hardening off um, because the hoops and row cover really provide a great environment. It's really hard to know when to pull a crop after blooming is slowed down. Can you speak to this? For example, when cool flowers are slowing down, do you pull out all the flowers and then replant with warm season or do you prep the beds again? Beds are always prepped typically between crops. Um, you know, certainly in the no-till area of our garden, this year we're going to try just lopping the plants at ground level and then plugging in the next crop amongst that. Um, a lot of people are talking about doing that and how beneficial it is. We're going to try it out. Um, so, yes, but normally we would you know, I try, once you grow cool flowers for a couple of years and you make notes on your calendar of when something blooms, then when you plant them the next year, you can plant those bed, those different flowers in the same bed that kind of have that same timing. So that, yes, I mean, that's a dream world is that an entire bed is finished and we pull the netting, mow it, till it, put fertilizer and compost if we're going to use it, 
till it and then put down and plant again and put bio 360 or mulch or depending on where it is we follow several different we're trying out several different um practices on the farm and so yes we do prepare each time unless we're trying that you know cut it and plug in again but we still try to add at least organic fertilizer my seedlings have sprouted but stay tiny for weeks does that mean i don't have enough light it could be not enough light and also air temperature is key oh, to, oh you got the dog thank you um so the air temperature for growing vegetative growth needs to be a bit on the warmer side so that means you know for great germination of cool flowers we find that 68 degree 68 degree air temperature on a seedling heat mat is a perfect world. Then to grow them on 68 to 70 for sure. Um, and if even if you can get it a little bit warmer than that, that is what's really gonna ramp up your ability to grow vegetation. Come here, buddy. Um, sorry, Tucker is kind of out of sorts here this morning. Come here, buddies. Come here. Come on, come on. I'll be back, y'all. Sorry. Um, so ramp up room for flowers. Your air temp and also um, light would be the other thing. If 16 hours, depending on what kind of light you have, be sure that it's the adequate length, um, height away from the canopy. And, um, and then also we feed every week with the seaweed, fish, Neptune's harvest, and the watering can. Watering can on Monday gets food. Water and can on Wednesday gets the natural. That way it's just part of my regular um, schedule and we don't have to like think about doing those things. It's just, that's what I do on Monday, right? All right, how many weeks before last frost can I plant out straw flowers? Straw flowers can be planted up to six to eight weeks before your last frost date. How many weeks before last frost can I plant? So, I mean, it's the same rule for all, it doesn't matter which cool flower it is. Um, so, yeah, six to eight weeks. How do you prepare your cool season hardy annual plugs when they arrive from a grower? So, whenever you order in plugs, when they arrive to you, they basically have not been hardened off. Um, they they come straight out of a greenhouse into those boxes and then get shipped. Um, so I, it depends on how they look when I get them. If they're puny, um, which can happen, then I might set them in my grow room for about five days, giving them um, you know, some food and water adequately, kind of helping them to recover. Um, but if they look great when I open the box, which is most often the case, I put them right out on the carport in the open, um, open exposure to have them harden off for about seven to 10 days. And it depends on the weather. You know, if it's dropping down to 17 degrees at night, it's probably not a good idea to leave them out there the first night because they've been like, you know, at <laughs> a resort, right? I mean, you know, 75 degree air temperature and food and water whenever they want it and um, so you just have to kind of use your head about that, but they are not hardened off when you receive them. When do you thin out direct seeded plants like bachelor buttons? Great question. So we direct seed um, in the fall several different cool flowers, and that's the only time I direct seed just for the record. I don't direct seed any warm season tender annuals ever. We always start transplants and plant them out. It's just far less weed pressure, less work, better success, all the way around, just less work. Um, so we fall plant direct seeds, and then right about probably what we call very early spring, about that same time that we're planting cool flowers, like mid-February, early March, we want to get in there and thin and do a little bit of hand weeding before the plants really start growing. We wanna get in there and do them. Um, I don't thin in the fall because I wanna make sure everybody makes it over the winter and that kind of stuff. So we'll be doing that here shortly. In one of your recent lives, you said to not mix soil blocks with different varieties as well as colors. What about seeds that come in a mix of colors? 
Well, a mix is a mix. There's no way to really get around that. But if you're starting, you know, a hundred red zinnias and a hundred white zinnias, it is just far better practice to not even mix them on the same tray because we do see a difference of the rate of germination. Um, but in a mix, obviously that's not really a choice. So a mi we mean we start mixes. That's the way, whenever there's a new flower I wanna grow, I always buy a mix if it's available because I wanna see all the colors, right? So yeah, just put mixes on one tray, but that was a great question. Hi, Lisa, I've started some seeds and soil blocks. Is there a trick to covering the seeds with soil? So yes, yeah, so if you're sure that the seed needs darkness to germinate, and so let's just look at three, um, zinnias, marigolds, and tomato plant, tomato seeds. All three of those benefit from darkness, but we start them in the small soil block. Um, the zinnia is like a little arrowhead shaped looking little seed. And we just literally, I dump them in my hand. I don't use the seed pan with zinnias. And we poke the pointy end first down into the soil block um, and that and push it just so the tail's sticking out and that creates darkness. The very same thing with marigolds. With tomato seeds, they're like a little frisbee disc. And we just, I drop a seed on the top of each block, then just use the toothpick tap it on one side to stand the seed up, and then I just push it down into the block. Um, so that is the way that we do that. And so I'm gonna take one last question and then we're done. Not a flower question, but when do you start tomatoes for the garden to have them ready by spring planting? And do you put these out earlier than last frost? So tomatoes are a warm season tender annual. We start them in the small block, but we like that is one of the few things that we bump up to the two inch blocker because it grows amazing transplants. Um, we like to plant tomatoes. If, if you're not using black film and hoops and covers um, that um, are special kind of conditions to plant them into, we do that. We have black film on the bed and we use hoops and covers. So we plant tomatoes at our last expected frost date, which is mid-April. You would never plant them any earlier than that. Um, but if you're not doing all those special stuff, then two weeks after your last frost date is when you should have your transplants ready to go into um, the, um, the bed. And But yeah, you don't want to, you know, you only want to, really push the envelope when you are providing the big picture for those transplants. So that's the answer to that. And that, friends, ends us today. Um, and I um, thank you so much for joining me here today. And listen, I did a walkabout in my cool flower garden yesterday to kind of show the um, kind of what everything looked like when the snow melted. And I posted it for my students, but we've also made it the chilling video for my weekly farm newsletter. Every week on our farm news, um, we have a, all these categories that we send you, and one of them is a chilling video, something that's kind of just interesting to look at. Well, this week, that's what it is. And if you, if you aren't getting our newsletter, you can still subscribe. It doesn't go out until four o'clock today. So if you can just go to the gardenersworkshop.com right there on the homepage, one of the blocks on there somewhere, it's like sign up for our farm news, sign up so you can get, a, it's about a three or four minute video of me kind of showing what the problems were and what the good stuff is about that. So friends, I will be on Clubhouse. Thank you, Jesse. Um, I will be on Clubhouse at 1 p.m. today. If you don't know what Clubhouse is, it's another phone app. It's an audio social media. And I'll be talking more seed starting stuff, troubles and answering your questions. Download the phone app, join Clubhouse, then join my club, which is Flower Farming. And I hope to see you over there. Till we meet again, friends. Ciao.